everyone. Thank you for hanging in. It's getting later in the day here, um, but we still have some a lot of things to cover. So I am happy to present Erdold Kozgun from Microsoft, who is going to present a package demo for you today. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you to the, the conference organization committee. Uh, so, uh, and welcome to Seattle. Uh, and this is a joint work with uh, the one of the core engineers and bioconductor project, Nitesh. Uh, and uh, we started our collaboration two years ago with the bioconductor team. And finally, we will see, and we are going to see uh, the outputs from our collaboration. And I'm a data scientist at Microsoft Genomics team uh, under Microsoft Research, and we are covering uh, the cloud-based genomic solutions uh, for our partners, stakeholders. And today's agenda uh, is, uh, I will start with, uh, what's the data science VM? Uh, what's the content of the data science VM? Uh, and what's the meaning of extensions for the Azure data science VMs? And I will share the, the built-in features from the data science VM templates. And uh, I will follow the architectural design of the custom deployments uh, and how can we use the existed ARM templates for the bioconductor users. Uh, one of the important part of this conversation is, um, or these kind of conversations, Every single researcher or data scientist needs a scalable compute engines, and uh, you need to install tons of uh, tools uh, or tons of packages if you are using Bioconductor. And with these kind of approaches, you can easily customize what you need and how can you share and how can you make it scalable. And for the session content, uh, you can find uh, the all the content and the video record that I uh, that I did for you uh, on the GitHub repo, and you can find the architectural design and uh, the ARM templates. Uh, if you would like to deploy the Bioconductor custom Bioconductor VM, you can find ARM templates uh, from the repo. I would like to pause a couple of uh, seconds for the link. Yeah, let's start with the data science VM. So uh, as a data scientist, I usually uh, prefer to use the virtual machines for my prototypes, for my uh, the initial analysis, just a single VM. Uh, but I need to use R, Python, uh, or any other deep learning or machine learning libraries. And uh, in this data science VM on Azure, uh, all these tools are built in. So let's say if you would like to use R, you already have an R, R kernel. Uh, you, if you would like to use Python, it's already there, or JupyterLab, uh, JupyterHub, you, you have everything. And the, another uh, advantage of using this VM template is uh, we can create our own sub-templates for the genomics data or sub-data frames. Uh, and you can easily continue to use the deep learning libraries that I'm going to deep dive. Or if you would like to uh, use the BI tools like Power BI or any other BI tool that you would like to use, uh, it's already there. Uh, and this is like a, it's a kind of package that you can uh, use your data on your own premises or on cloud and you can deploy your own solutions. And today, uh, I'm going to show you how can we add the bioconductor, uh, the dependencies, the bioconductor install, the whole, the, the specific package installations uh, with the custom ARM templates. Um, usually, I prefer to use Linux and the Linux distributions. Uh, and But if you would like to use the Windows, definitely you can do the same things, same installations with the similar ARM templates uh, on the, on Azure today. But uh, today I'm going to focus on the Linux side uh, and you can easily use the Spark, uh, the notebooks or the Spark environments on the VM too uh, with connection to your cloud environment. You can uh, use any Python libraries as I mentioned earlier and you can easily easily create your automation tasks uh, with these kind of uh, ARM templates. Therefore, you can do the similar things on Windows, but today we are going to focus on the Linux version. And these are the features uh, that I uh, usually highlight on my talks. Uh, this list is important because uh, we have 
tons of features, but sometimes we don't have. Uh, let's say if you would like to collaborate on your R Studio, uh, you cannot do it on the Data Science VM, but uh, you can do it on your Jupyter Hub or Jupyter Lab. Uh, you don't need to install the third-party tools, uh, but uh, as a data scientist, I prefer to use the TensorFlow, and it's already there. Uh, and if you'd like to uh, store your variants, the genomics variant information, the SQL Server is already installed in the Windows version, and in the Linux version, you can con easily connect your uh, SQL Servers on cloud or other synapse. Uh, this, this list is important, so after the call or session, please uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, for the uh, questions. And uh, the GPUs are important for the data science uh, in genomics, so I can uh, create my own custom bioconductor uh, virtual machine, uh, and if I would like to go to the tertiary analysis side, uh, I can easily uh, use the NVIDIA drivers or PyTorch or TensorFlow. And um, I know uh, most of the data scientists in the world would like to combine the deep learning uh, features uh, with their existing pipelines, the genomics pipelines. And I think this is a great chance uh, for uh, the bioconductor users for the tertiary analysis part. Um, if we would like to talk about the Linux extensions, uh, it's, it's a, a kind of feature that you can install anything that you need uh, after the deployment, the VM deployment phase. This means, and I'm going to explain it, but uh, you can deploy your virtual machine, then uh, while deploying, right after the deployment, uh, the shell file or the installation file that you have can easily submit it to your deployment. And you don't need to spend too much time. You don't need to check this or you check your checklist for the installation. Uh, this is a kind of shell file that you can easily install. And I will show the uh, the Nitesh uh, shell file for the bioconductor dependencies today. Uh, there are tons of ways to deploy your VM uh, or custom VMs. You can use the uh, the CLI, the other CLI, or your command prompt uh, on your Windows machine. Uh, you can do tons of uh, you know, or you can use tons of options for deploying your VM. And this is the high-level uh, architecture of the uh, the custom uh, bioconductor data science VM. And you can find the ARM templates and all the installation files in the GitHub repo. Uh, the first thing that I would like to highlight, you need two JSON files. And they are ready for your use because the templates, the ARM templates is already on Azure. Therefore, you don't need to customize them, uh, but you need two JSON files. The second one is uh, you need to uh, upload your shell file to the blob storage or any FTPs or any place in the web because the deployment uh, process needs to read your shell file from a, a specific location. Therefore, uh, I prefer to use the blob storage, but uh, I have my two JSON file and the shell file uh, for the custom installation. And I'm a user, and I can use my command prompt or Azure CLI uh, for, use the, for using the custom deployment commands. And once the deployment finished, I have my own custom VM. Uh, with, uh, with using the shell file that I point out, and I will have the Jupyter Hub or RStudio on my VM. So it's like a service or app on my VM. Therefore, it's not like, a, hey, I created my VM, and how can I you know, access to this VM? Uh, you have two options. You can use Jupyter Hub or RStudio. Um, this is the uh, shell file that Nita shared uh, on the Bioconductor Docker repo. Uh, so it's really important for the Bioconductor users. I'm a Bioconductor user too at the, at the end. Uh, and then, uh, once you uh, use this shell file, you can easily uh, you know, check all the dependencies and continue to use your own package codes or the other pipelines that you have with Bioconductor. Um, I hope it's, uh, yeah, the resolution is not best, but it's good. So uh, the first file that I mentioned is the template JSON file. So in this JSON file, uh, you can specify your, uh, the admin passwords or your security, the network security names, uh, or any other uh, arguments that you would like to add your template. Usually, uh, I don't prefer to change this template because it's 
already there. Uh, but if you would like to customize uh, your template, you can do it too. Uh, but these arguments are important. You can change uh, your admin uh, passwords or authentication methods. Or if you would like to uh, change the uh, operating system, you can do it from the template. Uh, but we usually prefer to uh, use the existed version. So this is the template JSON. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't need to change it, but this is one of the uh, file that you need. And uh, the most important part of this template JSON file, uh, I highlighted the four different lines. The first one is, uh, as you know, the virtual machines are always changing. So it's a maintained virtual machine uh, for the other users. Uh, but if you would like to use the different version, different uh, uh, data science VM on different configuration, uh, you can change and customize your template JSON file. And uh, the first box, red box, uh, represents the date of the data science VM version. And the second one uh, is the link for the data science VM uh, image. So you can use this JSON file for downloading the image from the Azure. It's public. Uh, and the second box will represent the link of the, uh, the image. Uh, this is important because we will as a Microsoft, probably we will uh, launch different versions of data science VMs. So uh, the only thing that you need to do is change the, uh, the template JSON link. Uh, for the parameters perspective, this is the thing that you can you need to know for customization. Uh, if you remember that the, uh, the shell file from Nitesh, uh, I just uploaded this shell file to my blob storage, the storage account, and I just edit the link of the shell file. So. If you change this link uh, with another shell file, uh, you can easily install the other tools that you need, or you can easily add the more than one different shell file uh, for your deployment. And uh, the command to execu execute is the another uh, important part of the template. Uh, this is like a regular Linux command. So the sudo bash install uh, the BIOS dependencies shell file. So uh, this is like, uh, a basic VM, uh, Linux VM, and uh, you can type it on your terminal. But in this custom deployment, you don't need to do it. Uh, you just need to add this command to your template JSON file. Any question until now? So this means you need a shell file, you need a template JSON, and the parameters JSON file, and it's already there on the GitHub. Uh, the parameters uh, JSON file uh, is the is the key of your apps, the built-in apps, because uh, in Linux, uh, in Linux or Windows uh, VMs, you need to uh, access your VM uh, via RStudio, via Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab. Uh, therefore, you need to open a port. Uh, in this example, uh, we just edit uh, the SSH port, Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab, and RStudio server ports. Uh, this means uh, whenever I deployed my VM, uh, I need to check my IP uh, for the VM, then uh, just edit the port of the VM to my deployment. Uh, most of the researchers have some uh, questions about the security. So this is important because in this parameter, JSON file, you can open the ports and you can add more security features, including the authentication method, uh, including uh, the specific security network group on your cloud environment. This means your data is in a secure place uh, and your VM is running on a secure environment. Yeah, please. Uh, so, and you can argue in the way the IT folks allow us to make these ports outside available because mm -hmm. they only want it within the firewall or within yeah. the institute. Yeah. So where can I point them to tell them that we can do this? Or where can I set up like the external users so the biologists that I'm collaborating with can actually access it? Yeah. The question was yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> the question was, how can we convince the IT guys to use these uh, kind of deployments with uh, not opening the ports to the public and store, maybe uh, save the access uh, to specific users, uh, maybe for your lab. So this is uh, the answer is in here. Uh, the network security groups is the key word or the key phrase. You, the, every single lab or the team can have a network security group and only these persons or these uh, colleagues can access this VM from this port because I will show it to you. You will have a Azure uh, Active Directory integration or the regular Jupyter Hub integration with the username, passwords, or two-factor authentication. Uh, the answer, the short answer is network security group. The, this phrase is the key and uh, we solved tons of problems uh, with uh, different um, projects. Uh, the federated learning is one of the, you know, the very popular uh, example. Uh, different groups work on the same project, but they don't want to share their data. So we can solve these kind of issues with the network security groups, plus uh, the federated learning options on the data science VM. I hope it answered. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the parameters JSON, the template JSON, parameters JSON, and the SH file. Uh, these are the three files uh, that I need. So how can I deploy it? So I will show in the record the video, uh, but this is the, these, this is the comments for deploying the data science VM. So first of all, you need a subscription. Uh, and I will show and share how can you get a you know, subscription for research. Uh, but the subscription is the first thing. You need to uh, show your subscription ID, the resource group name. Uh, you need to create a resource group for a specific user or user group. And you can give a permission to these uh, persons for accessing this VM. The template URL location is important. The template URL location, parameters JSON location, and the location for the VM. So we have more than 60, six zero regions. So which region is the best for you? So I know different countries like EU uh, or uh, the, some kind of counties in different countries as a different rules. They cannot use the data center in different countries. Uh, therefore, you need to be sure that you deploy your VM on the right region uh, in the right configuration. Uh, and you can get the support from different uh, the other technicians too. Uh, the virtual network ID, this is another uh, line that I needed to uh, show. And the admin password, regular admin password, virtual machine size, you have tons of options, including GPU and CPU machines, uh, or uh, some confidential VM options there. Uh, the network interface name, the security group name, virtual machine name, and admin username. So these are the basics for deploying your own VM. You can remove the parameters from there or arguments from there, uh, or you can add more. Uh, we have more than 50 different uh, arguments for the data science VM deployment, uh, but the, these are the default ones that I'm using uh, for deploying custom wave on Dr. VM. Uh, so, and another question probably on your mind is which virtual machine family is the best for bioconductors? <laughs> so, it, there's no single answer, but I usually prefer to use the D series for my, uh, you know, analysis on, with the bioconductor packages, or if I would like to go with the GPU, uh, the, the GPU based tertiary analysis, uh, I prefer to use the N series. So, you can find all these details in the link that I shared. Uh, but the important part is uh, you don't need to or deploy a VM with highest configuration. Uh, maybe you don't need a 146 GB memory, or maybe you don't need a two terabytes of disk. Uh, I joined different workshops in this conference, and uh, from my uh, you know, observations, uh, people need maximum one terabyte or two terabyte. So why should I deploy or attach the four terabyte disk? Uh, definitely, this is, you may need more maybe, uh, but uh, the, one of the advantages of using these kind of custom templates is I don't need to attach the four terabyte, five terabyte in each deployment. I can customize it. So whenever I need a more disk for my new data set, I can easily attach it. And I just need to add a new argument to my deployment. So this means the storage is customizable, definitely. And uh, 
the deployment is really easy uh, for the users that doesn't have any experience with the cloud. And another thing is, as I mentioned earlier, for my prototypes, I just deployed one VM. But whenever I need to scale up my analysis, I, need, I should do that easily. And with the custom data science VM images, I can create my own scale set. This means I can create 10 or 20 different VM with the same configuration, and they are all connected. Connected because I can, maybe I can share different VMs for different researchers, and the scale set is one of the options that I can use for uh, the custom data science VM deployment. Uh, I will be happy to deep dive uh, if you have any question um, at the end of the session, but the scale set is one of the advantages of using custom bioconductor data science VM because I don't need to think about the scalability of my analysis. Uh, and uh, before uh, skipping to the record, uh, maybe uh, you don't have another subscription. Maybe you don't have enough budget. So we have different options uh, for the researchers. As a Microsoft research and a data scientist, uh, I onboarded maybe more than 10 different open source projects uh, to our environment. And we are trying to support these projects uh, for uh, uh, contributing to their success and definitely uh, publish paper with them, uh, create a joint workshops with them. So this is one of the, you know, uh, the important part uh, on my uh, perspective. And you can visit the links uh, in the presentation. Uh, there is the other uh, academic research grants that you can apply. And if you have students that you would like, that would like to maybe create a bioconductor data science VM, uh, so you can easily uh, submit and forward the link in the black box uh, for getting a grant for your students or maybe individual students can apply for it. So uh, I would like to, uh, by the way, I needed to record uh, the deployment. The reason is uh, I, I cannot use my own PC, uh, but I cannot log in my uh, Microsoft account from any PC. That's the blocker for me. Therefore, I recorded this video and I will just walk through with you. So please uh, just you know, uh, ask your questions if you have any. So uh, this is the GitHub repo uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's public, uh, and you can find uh, the, the short description of the architectural design. You can find the, the, the template uh, JSON file and parameters JSON file uh, with the uh, SH file you use. And uh, I edit the feature table uh, for the Linux VMs. And uh, the de deployment command uh, for your use, it's, all, it's, it's ready to use actually, and you will see it. Uh, you just need to uh, customize your uh, subscription ID and uh, the other parameters on the list. Um, in the very bottom of the page, uh, you can uh, see the links for the template JSON file and the parameters JSON file. Uh, you don't need to change them or customize them, it's there. You just need to change your subscription ID for using it. Uh, as I explained in the presentation, you can find the other arguments that you can change or customize, uh, like your question, uh, network security ID changes or network interface IDs or the version of the data science VM. And uh, you, if you would like to use or install other shell files, you just need to change this line. And in the parameters uh, JSON, uh, JSON file, uh, you can change your uh, ports, uh, you can change your security, uh, network security IDs or groups, uh, or if you would like to uh, change the specific configuration for our studio server or Jupyter server, you can change from there. And the SH file uh, that we used uh, for this command is coming from uh, the Bioconductor core teams um, a link. Uh, thank you, Intesh, for preparing this for Boyconductor users, and I use it too. So uh, all these deployments coming from there, so you can easily test it. And uh, for the sample command, uh, I shared the sample command in the text file. Uh, you just need to copy this command and uh, customize it on your text editors, uh, change your subscription ID or change your admin passwords, uh, the, the usernames. So this is the, the, the default and the, the basic configuration. And I just copy and paste this um, text file and open my uh, command 
yeah, open my CMD, then paste it, then that's all. So before uh, going to the next stage, I would like to highlight, oh, okay, it's not better, but I would like to highlight a specific point. Uh, you need to log in your Azure account uh, on your um, CLI or your uh, command prompt. So don't forget to log in. So after just deploy, uh, submit my deployment, uh, I can easily track what's going on uh, on my deployment. Uh, if you log into your Azure portal, uh, you can easily see, uh, hey, uh, what's the, what's the uh, progress on my deployment for network security groups or public IP address or the virtual machine uh, selection phases. So you can easily track this deployment uh, from the Azure portal. Uh, this is good because I can easily share this portal with my colleagues and they can easily track the progress. Uh, in the next phase, if you remember uh, the username and password on my commands, uh, I just need to use them uh, for logging into my Azure, uh, sorry, uh, logging into my Jupyter Hub. And the important part is you need to know your IP from your Azure portal. And the port is 800 in this case. Uh, and uh, you just need to know your password and username on the commands that I shared. Uh, and then once you enter your username and password, you just need to log in and sign in. And the Jupyter Lab is coming from Jupyter Hub. And this is the initial page for the Jupyter Hub. Uh, if you remember that we have the shell file and we can uh, install the extra packages easily. And this VM, uh, is uh, running the Jupyter Hub in here, and the Julia notebooks, Azure ML notebooks, Python notebooks, R notebooks with the uh, R kernel, uh, and the other uh, Markdown files is already there. You don't need to install anything, uh, but you can easily start with the terminal because this is a VM, this is a Linux VM, and uh, I just would like to show this is the regular VM with the custom Bioconductor installations. And if you would like to test the installation from there, uh, just test installation with one of the R kernels, uh, my R notebooks. I just click to my R notebook. And as you can see, uh, the R kernel in the right side uh, is running now. And uh, in the regular and classical data science VM, we don't have any bioconductor installation. So with this shell file, it already installed everything. Like, like, let's say the base bioconductor packages and the dependencies, then I can easily install anything uh, to my notebooks. I'm using it for the workshops, for the, uh, the specific courses, because I can just create my own image and every single student will have the same uh, VM. And uh, you can easily track the uh, execution uh, minutes or seconds uh, or how many cores you are using for the Python. Uh, but in R, you can just track the, the kernel status, the execution uh, requests. And uh, another way to install the similar bioconductor packages, uh, I can easily open my terminal from there and just type R. R is already there, and I, I, use, I can easily install the same uh, packages with the terminal too. I have two options, uh, let's say, for checking the, the deployment, the terminal or R kernels. And another thing that I would like to highlight is the application list. If you remember the shell file that Nitesh created, uh, these, there are different libraries uh, that already are uh, installed to my VM. Uh, and you can check the application list, uh, the library list that we installed with this shell file. Uh, this is good because uh, I can easily prove that I don't have any issue for installing the external shell files. And this is the list of the, um, the libraries from the shell file and you can easily compare that uh, from the video or from the templates that I shared with you. Uh, and the last part is uh, to uh, check the specific uh, packages that we installed uh, with the bioconductors, and it's coming soon. Um, just, I just compare the, ins the installed libraries with the existed one. Yes, the final one is 
I can uh, check uh, which packages that I installed uh, to my bio, bio, custom bioconductor data science VM, and I just check the name of the, uh, the libraries and available on my VM. Yeah, so uh, I tested several times. Uh, I can easily install any library that I need for my uh, installation. So um, this, uh, the all content that I have for today, um, as I mentioned earlier, please feel free to uh, send an email uh, to me or Nitesh, definitely. Uh, the main idea of this session is you can customize anything on the data science VMs. And uh, this is the one of the, and the earliest uh, example of bioconduct, custom bioconductor data science VM. Since I shared this, uh, these shell files and the comments, uh, I, I, I saw the traffic. So many people are looking for these kind of built-in solutions. Uh, and uh, you will have all the libraries plus Bioconductor uh, on this deployment. And thank you. Thank you. So we do have one question that came in on the chat. Um, what is the advantage of using DSVM over just a Docker container of the application launched in a plain VM? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, who, who asked this question? Uh, Alex. Alex. So um, the cloud is not just a VM. The cloud has storage accounts. Cloud has the servers or the databases. So whenever you deploy this VM, you have a secure connection between the servers, VMs, and storage accounts. So therefore, uh, these kind once you install the Docker image, definitely you can use it. But uh, you need to work on the security uh, issues with the, the individual Docker images. But once you deploy this VM, it's really easy to connect different services, including the service storage accounts. And uh, we will have Terra soon, Terra on Azure. So whenever you will have Terra on Azure instance, uh, you can use the similar approach. So I hope it, I, answer, I can answer the question. So I think there's a follow-up question sure. that he asked. Um, what might be the answer? Uh, is there a built-in supervisor or some other process recovery to bring the application back up if it errors out? Uh, so there's an error message on the portal. You can see the error message for the, if you have any issues on the application, the installation of the applications. Uh, but usually, uh, I tested these shell files, and I recommend the same thing to the researcher. Uh, I just test my shell file on my PC, then use it. But yes, there is an error message and the definition of the error uh, on the portal. Um, so just two questions. If I was to set up like these VMs for like students, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, how, like, is the data, what happens if kind of this goes down to the living station or the not living station? Do I need to be backing up what's happening on some sort of blood storage or what's the recommendation? Yeah, there is a specific intervals that. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the question is. Uh, Maybe I can summarize your question. Uh, so whenever I deployed a couple of VM and maybe I can use my data, lose, lose my data, and how can I be sure that my data is insecure and backed up? Is that the right definition? Okay. So um, there is a different uh, features on the data science VM. You can define a specific intervals for backup your disk, or you can easily install one of the Azure SDKs for doing that manually. Uh, but usually I prefer to set up the automated backups for my VMs on different regions. Let's say I'm working on the UK, but I would like to backup on, my, on the US servers so uh, as a disaster recovery. So there are different disaster rec recovery options uh, for the VMs. Yeah. And we have it for all VMs actually, not just for data science VMs. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I maybe I need to check the features. This feature, uh, question, the Chris singularity, right? You, yeah. So I need to check this uh, for uh, the different versions. Actually, I didn't test it earlier. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.